wood ducks are small little ducks. You usually find them on inland waters. And you can even find one in January if you're crazy enough. <laughs> chimney swifts. You usually see chimney swifts in the air, which is why I showed you one in the air. What do they look like? Cigars with wings. <laughs> when you look up and you just see a cigar with a quickly flapping wings, usually at dusk, that's a chimney swift. I'm going to ask you what size uh, the body is about that big? They're little. Um, here's the toughest question I'm going to ask you. Where do you think chimney swifts roost? <laughs> chimneys. What do we responsible homeowners do to our chimneys? We cap them. We cap them for very good reasons. We don't want destruction. We don't want raccoons. But as a result, the chimney swift is one of North America's most threatened species. It's still listed as a species of least concern by the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. Um, so it's a, still a green species, but it is one of the most rapidly declining species in North America. So what some cities and garden clubs and birding organizations are doing is they're erecting chimney swift towers, which are basically chimneys. They're doing that on rooftops, they're doing that in public parks. Um, and it's one thing to think about as like a garden club, I know you have pollinator gardens and wildflower gardens, and those give us some conservation of some wonderful species like the monarch butterfly. Uh, in the eastern United States, the monarch butterfly has rebounded very dramatically, specifically because of efforts of garden clubs and other places. Um, but these things produce bugs, and bugs are a good part of our environment, but they can get out of control. So we have species in the environment that are meant to control bug populations. Chimney swifts would be one of them. The common nighthawk would be another one. Common nighthawk is almost never seen. It's a fairly nocturnal species. It's from a family of birds called goat suckers. <laughs> because in the, in the 17th century, they thought that that's how they ate, by sucking blood out of goats. It's not true. They eat bugs. And I brought the common nighthawk up because when you start birding, it starts to become part of the story of your life. So my father, of blessed memory, and I were out golfing at Sweetbriar, Avon Lake, and it was uh, the 18th of May, 1999. He had gotten into birding just like I had. He was not as crazy as I was. But we're golfing at sunset, and we're approaching the 18th green, and we see a bird flying overhead, flitting. When this bird has its wings open, it has about inch-wide white stripes on the underside of its wing. It's a very dramatic-looking bird. And we just stood there watching in the gloaming. And we both rushed home to our field guides <laughs> and said, that was a common nighthawk. You very rarely see them. And I'll never see this bird without thinking of my dad and thinking of standing on that 18th green. So I'm sure you have similar stories with gardening. How about some birds that have been seen? And then I'll take some questions. In Lorraine recently, a western grebe, he belongs out in California, or Vancouver, British Columbia, and it was seen at Lorraine Harbor last year. Doesn't belong here. A northern gannet, this is a seabird, usually from the northern Atlantic, seen at Lorraine, again, Lorraine Harbor. The white-faced ibis, Seen last year in Lorain County, this bird belongs in Florida. Boy, did he get lost. Some, they do. <laughs> They're on star breaks, I think, on occasion, and they get off track. And some species are more known for wandering off track. Uh, American white pelican would be a good example. We almost always have occurrences of American white pelican in Ohio every year. And there it is, the roseate spoonbill, <coughs> seen last year in Lorain County. That spatula-shaped bill, right? 
It's a gorgeous bird. It reminds you, of course, of a flamingo. But uh, this bird is much easier to see than a wild flamingo in the ABA area. There's really only one place where you might have a chance of seeing a wild flamingo, and that is at the end of the snakebite hiking trail in Everglades National Park. It's one of the most mosquito-infested trails on the planet. And if you go out there with a spotting scope that you can see very far away, you're giving yourself about a 20% chance of seeing an American flamingo. And I did it, and I did not see one. The varied thrush seen in Avon Lake in 2012. What shape bird does that remind you of? A robin, right, this is a thrush. Remember I told you robin's name was Turdus migratorius? Thrush is Turdus. So this is also a thrush, definitely belongs on the Pacific coast, but fairly regularly we get one showing up in Northeast Ohio. Last year, Avon Lake. I was in someone's backyard actually, not at one of the hot spots. So start that yard list, you never know who's gonna show up. I saw my life varied thrush during this January 100 in Calvary Cemetery this year. One wandered there. Spotted towhee. We have a bird called the Eastern towhee that looks ex almost exactly like this. That's a resident. I had one in my backyard during January. It's a very rare yard bird. But we had one of these in Avon Lake, a spotted towhee. Uh, it's those white spots on the wing that make it a spotted towhee. Warblers. When it comes May time, you don't even have to go out to McGee, though you should. Look for warblers in the newly blossoming trees. There's a sweet spot where the trees are still not in bloom enough that we can't see what's in them, bird-wise, but the birds are on their way through. By the way, migrating warblers show up on the radar coming out of Cuba. They will all stop in Cuba, and when they leave and move north, you can see on the Doppler radar at night, it looks like a storm is brewing, growing north. And they do the same thing when they hit the shore of Lake Erie. They stop, they drop down out of the sky, and they refuel before going up to Canada. This is a Blackburnian warbler, one of our most stunning uh, colored warblers with this iridescent orange 